Department of Financial Services. Mr. Santana. Yes, approach the podium, Mr. Santana. The uh, procedure here is as follows. We each side gets 10 minutes uh, to argue. We have read the briefs and your materials, and we've read the department's materials. So you will have 10 minutes to argue your case or tell us whatever you wish to tell us. And if you wish to reserve some time, then you should tell me now. And ordinarily, um, an appellant such as yourself might reserve, say, two minutes. So would you like to reserve a couple of minutes to respond to whatever the department has to say? Yes, Your Honor. I All sure right. Will. Then you may proceed. Well, Your Honor, as you all, all know, you read the uh, briefs. The whole thing comes down to your decision on May 25th, 2010, on what this remand actually means. The department's decision is that the recalculated periods order to recalculate the waiting periods somehow opens the case entirely. And somehow it continues to be a pipeline case. However, the case law that I submitted to you, starting with State versus Brown, which is for Supreme Court case, it says once you re remand the case back for a review of the specific part of the case, which is a collateral part of the case, no longer is this considered a pipeline case. It is considered a different case altogether, and the case law and the law that applies is a, is a law that, that actually was applicable at the time that you did the remand. As I'm a matter not, of I'm fact, not, I'm not sure that the argument is that it's a pipeline case, but that the issue is a pipeline issue. Obviously, you don't go back and relitigate um, the denial of the application. The question is the calculation of the waiting period. Isn't that portion of the case in the pipeline? Because well, that has not yet been totally resolved. I agree, but it's a collateral part of the case because the case already has been settled for the most part. The part about the restoration, the part about the triggering dates, the part about its qualification periods already has been settled by the part that was affirmed by this court and not the only part, the collateral part that you remanded back to recalculate, which is purely a ministerial act that the agent or the appellee has to do. Nothing more, nothing less. They are not allowed to introduce new evidence. As a matter of fact, Your Honor. But if, if, we, if we assume that you're correct, that um, the only thing is isn't ministerial because you have to go back and recalculate, and if you recalculate, you have to consider mitigating and aggravating factors. So it's not a ministerial act. But assuming for a moment that we agree with you it's not pipeline and that they're confined by the, the law that was in existence at the time that we remanded, right. although there was a change in the law before the, re the recalculation, assume for a moment that you are correct. The hearing did go forward, and the, the, um, the ALJ uh, decided that 21 years was the appropriate uh, number uh, of years for the waiting period, considering the aggravating and mitigating factors. If, that, if we were to affirm on that ground that that was appropriate, based upon the, the ALJ's abuse, uh, uh, standard of, of discretion, wouldn't you then have to wait and then when the 21 years is uh, concluded have to reapply and then wouldn't you admit when you reapply the new law would kick into effect? Well, first of all, Your Honor, the 21 years that the LJ uh, uh, said in the written report is not based on any calculations that he says. He just says overall. He doesn't, he doesn't refer to any rules. He says if we were to assume that I'm not having no, but, but he's considered all the, you know, and he right. did go through the aggravating well, and mitigating circumstances and how he considered those circumstances in concluding that 21 years was the appropriate waiting period. Well, Your Honor, the, the notice of uh, denial, which is the issue here upon everything has been litigated and went to the whole gauntlet, and there's no other uh, uh, litigant that I know I'm aware of that is challenging this because obviously – uh, uh, financially, it would be impossible to hire an attorney to go all the way up to the third DCA. It says right here in this paragraph, it says, as a result of your April 17, 1992 trigger date and your total waiting period of 25 years, you will become eligible for licensure on April 17, 2007. Eligible, it doesn't say reapply. As a matter of fact, the, the, the section, the former section says similarly, it says effective waiting periods and it says as, as such, the waiting period established in this rule do not give the license see a right to licensure after the period, the period of time if the department finds additional evidence 
that the applicant still possesses a criminal propensity which poses an undue threat to the public welfare. In comparison to the new one, which reads now, conveniently, the effect of this qualifying period says this qualifier period is applied pursuant to section 2626207 or established in this rule, do not give an applicant the right to licensure after the set period. After this qualifying period, an applicant may reapply for licensing and the law in effect at the time of the application. Mind you, this adopt the rule wasn't filed until just recently and promulgated by the appellee. Are, it wasn't you, in effect you, at the time. Excuse me. Are, are you arguing that that after the 21 year waiting period has concluded that you don't need to just to reapply, you just automatically get a license? It's that's what the former rule says. The adopt well, that, the rule. That wouldn't make any sense logically because what if, for example, you committed a crime in the interim? Are you saying that you would automatically get a license and that the ALJ could not consider that evidence in determining whether or not to grant licensure? Well, Your Honor, the problem is they just adopted this rule and they just added this language. At the time, it wasn't, and, and during the hearing at the DOH, their, their own witness admitted so, that. If they didn't adopt a new rule, he may have made it a different statement in his order, but it has no new rule. The, that the I problem know. is, Your Honor, they created this rule after the first DCA that affirmed my invalidation of the rule on April the 1st. On April the 9th, the, the Committee of, Minis uh, of, uh, of Economic Affairs on the Doug Holder, all of a sudden, a swastika did this law, which bars me according to one of my convictions, which they claim is a fraud, but I put some case law there under United States versus Frower, which is a Supreme Court case, that says the making of a false application to a passport, which, by the way, as you all know, I was induced by the federal government to go overseas in my anti-Castro efforts, you know, and now they're using it to bar me under the new law. So I find a kind of ironic and kind of self-defeating that they created this law, which coincidentally has all the ingredients of the very challenges that I had, and remedy, in only, and all they had to do is just replace it with my name, last name and middle initial just to make it effective upon me because out of the 64 crimes that were in the catch-all provisions that were revised, four of them, which consist of the six bar and stature, have to do with fraud, which have to do with the one that they now conveniently switch around. As you all know, I argue, the notice of, the, of denial was based on three specific convictions. They keep rotating around depending on how it works for them. The first time there was nine, the 92 firearms conviction because at the time, under the former rules, gained the most exposure. Now this time around, they switched to the passport conviction because now it became a barring provision according to the new rule even though the case all says otherwise. So it's just constantly looking ways to move the, the goalposts further behind so that there's no way that I could ever get a license. Okay. Mr. So, Santana, you have, you have uh, reached your eight minutes. If you would like to reserve some time for a rebuttal yes, to what Your the Honor, State has would, to say, then we need to uh, permit uh, yes, counsel for the Department to, to, to argue, and then you'll have your two minutes to reply. Yes, Your Honor. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Bush. <clears throat> May it please the Court, Your Honor. My name is David Bush. I do represent the Florida Department of Financial Services. Uh, this case is, I think, uh, we can all agree, something of a continuation of the Court's uh, prior review of Mr. Santana's application for a public adjuster's license. During the uh, pendency of that appeal, of course, the uh, DOA threw out uh, his initial, that is, uh, the initial judgment threw out portions of what uh, we uh, referred to as a criminal history rule, 69B to 11042, which Mr. Santana has just been arguing uh, should be applicable uh, now. Uh, well, that order was affirmed the, by the first I don't DCA. Know that it, excuse me, I don't know that it, it really is dispositive as to whether or not we apply the new law or the law that was in effect at the time that we remanded. I think the issue is, is whether or not the ALJ abused its discretion in imposing a 21-year waiting period if, in fact, um, there is a waiting period based upon the law of the case. I mean, uh, Your Honor, you're, you're referring to your Don't we need to first look to see whether or not there was an abuse of discretion? And if there 
is an abuse of discretion, then I guess we would have to address whether it would be a permanent waiting period. And if there's no abuse of discretion, wouldn't Mr. Santana have to reapply at the end of the 21 years? And then whatever law is in effect at that point would apply to him. Well, I think first it's a question of whether or not there's a permanent bar that applies to Mr. Santana under the new statute. Does the new law apply and, do, and does the new rule apply? If they apply, and uh, we, uh, it's the department's position they do in, a, in part by reason of this court's uh, prior decision in this very case. It's, it's, a rule, it's the law of the case now. Um, so that, but that, first that, that law council came into effect after, after our decision in 2011, correct? That rule? That's correct, and uh, this Why court affirmed it, the, what, what the, the, the... What was the law in effect with respect to waiting periods at the time of our decision? Was, well, there, was there any such law? There, uh, the waiting periods really were... were uh, to some, first of all, it was, it, you have the DOA decision. Well, but, but based, based upon the, the appeal and the, the affirmance by the first DCA during the pendency of our appeal, um, the, the new requirement was that although you can impose the, the waiting periods that already had been um, identified, you had to consider aggravating and mitigating circumstances. Was, it, it wasn't just a, a pro forma, 15 years, 25 years, you had to consider aggravating and mitigating circumstances. That was the only change. And so when we remanded it, it was to, for that consideration. It was the 25 years or whatever the t years were going to be, which I believe was 25, you had to then consider aggravating and mitigating circumstances. That was basically all it was going back for on our remand, correct? Correct. Okay, and uh, then what happened was two weeks later, the, uh, the statute was actually amended. It wasn't a change in the rule, it was a change in the law. It was by statute that said that for certain crimes and specific crimes of fraud, there, uh, it was a, a manda uh, mandatory disqualification. Correct. So I guess the question is, do we apply that change in the law? It's not a rule change, but the change in the law to Mr. Santana's case when it was going back on a remand for consideration of mitigation and aggravating circumstances? Well, uh, I believe the case law that we've cited in our brief would indicate that the law that's in effect at the time uh, while the application is pending is the law that must be applied. And I think Your Honor correctly pointed out uh, first of all, that there was a denial of uh, his application that was affirmed by this court in the first Santana case. So whether you consider that, um, so it's still, it, it, we maintain it, it's still pending resolution. And I think whether you uh, apply the 21-year period that you suggested or the or that was suggested uh, by the hearing officer, Dow Dell, or you apply the 23-year period under the rules that are presently uh, in effect, either, in either instance, uh, Mr. Santana would have to uh, come before the department and his character, as you po pointed out earlier, at the time of that application would then have to be uh, reviewed. But in, in any case, the new statute and the new rule would have to be applied. That's how, the, that's how we see it, Your Honor. I, I don't that's know whether that answers his, your question That's or because not. his application was denied, and that has been upheld by this court in a prior decision. I'm sorry? You're, the, you're saying that the, Mr. Santana's application for a license was denied because of his, because of relating to his criminal convictions and that that decision was upheld by this court in its prior decision? The court said, yes, uh, this court said that it was, the department acted well within its discretion in denying Mr. Santana uh, a licensure. Now, um, and yet in the most recent um, administrative decision, the department again denied 
um, Mr. Santana his application. Why did the department so revisit it, that it, issue? It applied, it applied a permanent bar because the law changed. And under the new statute, uh, it's, it's really, uh, he's not even eligible to apply, on applying the new, the new law. All right, now, we're here reviewing an administrative decision that has permanently um, uh, barred Mr. Santana from applying for this license because of his criminal convictions. What happens to the constitutional issues? It, it seems to me we don't even address the constitutional issues in this proceeding because we're just reviewing the DOA decision, and DOA has no jurisdiction regarding constitutional issues. Would you agree with that? Yes, I agree with that, and I point out that, you know, bear in mind that this was not an appeal from a DOA decision. This was an appeal, but, but in either case, you're correct. And neither DOA nor our own department has any uh, authority to consider constitutional issues. So whatever decision we make today, it's, um, it's not binding on any constitutional issues? No, I don't believe it is. So, so for Correct. example, you haven't addressed the Sandlin case in your briefs, and we would not be addressing that in our decision. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Santana argues that um, that the uh, hearing officer um, changed the the offense between uh, his his first appeal and the time when it went back on remand, as to which offense um, the department was going to rely on substantially for denying his or for calculating the waiting period. That when the case initially uh, was resolved below, that the offense that was relied on by the department was the firearms, the possession of the pipe bomb. Whereas upon remand, the department then relied on the fraudulent um, conviction, the conviction for fraud, because that was the offense that would disqualify him permanently based upon the change in the statute. Would you address that argument? Yes, Your Honor. The, the, we, uh, it's, we believe that the new law applies. And when you apply the new statute, you get a different, you have to, uh, fraud becomes uh, preeminent among the various uh, criminal actions that were committed by uh, Mr. Santana. And so we focused, the, the hearing officer focused on uh, two offenses involving fraud. Uh, one, I believe, uh, for the one that uh, had to do with the passport application. And actually there was another, I'm confusing with the moral turpitude issue, which there were two offenses that uh, brought that into bear, but that's a lesser, uh, considered lesser offense under the new law. But under the moral, the moral, uh, the uh, the one criminal action of uh, criminal conduct took uh, precedence because the legislature chose to uh, to make fraud very significant, fraudulent conduct more significant. That's that's the reason that uh, the hearing officer changed the emphasis. Since we're not moving goalposts, I mean, the legislature may be moving them, but we're not. We're simply following the. Uh, the dictates of the new statute. Thank you, Council. <clears throat> Mr. Santana, you have uh, you come back to the podium and you have two minutes. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, yeah, um, they made it more significant than armed robbery, than extortion, than bribery, than treason, than racketeering, than robbery, than conspiracy, than rape, arson, kidnapping. I know the crimes more egregious than the one that I did with that the was, That was the legislature's decision. Yeah, the legislature's decision. It was so it happens out of the four fraud, which have to be Coincidentally with mine, they made up, coincidentally, they changed the triggering date, which was an issue. Coincidentally, they abolished restoration of civil rights, which was an issue that Judge Neely on the DOA very th thoroughly addressed, the fact that they were using the very same crimes for the first of the uh, fitness and, and trustworthiness under the under their relevant section for the, uh, to, in order to bar me under that, even though they were using the underlying, the underlying circumstances. I'd like to also point out that the notice of uh, denial upon which travels, travels on the very same original convictions. They don't get to rearrange these musical chairs because of the well, fact. How is, how is this any different than, for example, a criminal case that comes up on appeal where the conviction is affirmed, but it's 
it's reversed and remanded for resentencing because there was an error in the sentencing. Why would this be Your any Honor, different? Your Honor, your court just this past April on Padilla in the case of Hernandez versus State, 61 South and 2nd, 1144, just sent this case, very same case having to do with the procedural remedial issue back to the Supreme Court and say, saying that even though it's procedural and remedial to a certain extent, there's no retroactivity given to the Padilla decision. No, but what I'm asking is wouldn't the, the, uh, the department have the, the right and actually be required to consider all the relevant evidence at a, a sentencing hearing or a resentencing hearing and the same in terms of, you know, then calculating the issue, the, the, the the issue comes is whether period. what they did is a bill of attainder, whether in fact they can use all the law and bring another matter in that was not related to the original remand, which is a savage, and the other cases that I cited are precludes, in which the case law versus State versus Brown says collateral cases are not given retroactive application as pipeline cases. Right. They differentiate. Counsel, if, our, our Mr. Santana. Yes. Your time is up. My, thank, thank you, you very Honor. much. What, what is the relief you want? Could you just say that very succinctly? I would like to get the license. It's almost 20 years. How long are they going to keep punishing me? I already went to law school. I took the bar exam. I'm waiting for the results in three days. I am trying to get myself doing, fighting the cause for the legal way. It's political causes, the legal way, through the court system. I learned okay, this. But you, the, your license has been denied. Yes. yes. You want that reversed. Do, no. do you also want something decided regarding the waiting period? I'm not looking for any monetary damages. All I'm looking for is fair shot you in want life. Your, you want your license. I want the license. Yeah, I want the rehabilitation which All you right. got, which this court and everybody so much rally about, to for the first time give it to somebody who actually opened the path to do. If not, like Michelle Obama says, when you open the door, stretch your hand, and pull somebody thank and you. give an Mr. Opera. Santana, thank you very much. Thank you. you will receive a decision in writing. Thank you. From us. Appreciate your time.